If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's so already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Fire merch. <laughs> Vin just got a phone call. He will be here soon. Okay. Yes, and you and I is up next. <coughs> Sorry. All right. The song itself talked about movement and the summit peak. If I'm remembering the lyrics right. Babe, ready? We're live. That was <laughs> She's telling me about some prank they played on us. All right. <clears throat> Wait, we didn't even know we were being pranked. <laughs> <laughs> they like the empty chairs on the other side of the infomercial. All right, guys, here we go. <laughs> yeah, if you knew anything about the rapture, you'd start to wonder. <laughs> <coughs> well, our shirts weren't there. <laughs> well, they would have slid down in the seat. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, true. <laughs> All right. You and I. Oh, and you and I is up next by the band Yes for the Big Homie Nick. DJ Nick, 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 Nick. All right, guys, check it out. You and I. Let's go.
shapes of the morning And you and I reach over the sun for the river And you and I climb clearer towards the movement And you and I go over valleys of endless And that was You and I by the band. Yes, yes. dear um, listener. Uh, what were your thoughts? I agree. Again, I the harmonies, crazy again with the harmonies. Yeah, they did a lot of cool stuff with that. It just had like a a sound that you really liked. And again, their, their overall sound that I keep hearing, you know, kind of spread throughout all these songs is a just got this sound to me that if you listen to this music at a certain phase of your life and then you move to another phase and then didn't listen to that music anymore if you went back and listened to it it would flood back a lot of memories yeah yeah i, I actually could see people getting real sad yep <laughs> you know what i'm saying just yep. because the way life was probably really really good when you were listening like if yeah. you're listening to this song yeah. if you're listening to this song yeah that means life was really really good yeah. I think. I anyway. agree. So, yeah. That's like bygone times, all type of shit. Yeah. yeah. For sure. For and it sure. was interesting because, like, some of the lyrics, I was like, wait, what, wait where, where, what are we talking about? And then there was other parts that just did definitely seem, like, romantic. And uh, so I am kind of curious to hear your take on some of the different... Um, yeah, I'm trying to find... I hate not having all like, the Like, obviously, when he time. says, yeah, genius has it all. Um, well, no, I got them all there. It's just looks like they have a lot more than all. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, where was it? Where he talked about a man conceived a moment and a moment's answers to the dream, staying the flowers daily, sensing all the themes. Is a foundation left to create the spiral aim, a movement regained and regarded both the same, all completed in the sight of seeds of life with you. Changed only for the, for a sight, the sound, the space agreed between the picture of time behind the face of need. Coming quickly to terms of all expression laid, emotions revealed as the ocean made, all complete in the sight of seeds of life with you. Coins and crosses, turn round, tailor assaulting, never know their fruitless worth, all the mornings of the present shown, presenting one another to the cord cords are broken all left dying rediscovered of the door that turned around locked inside the mother earth i mean lyrically this dude is uh is brilliant what are you what are you thinking about as oh, you're hearing i all think this it stuff? was the re the refrain and you and i climb over sea to the valley valley and you and i reach up for reasons to call so he keeps talking about like what they did together i liked those parts obviously because mm -hmm. it sounded more relational when he when they said uh I don't know. Okay, coming quickly to terms of all expression laid. Emotion revealed as the ocean made, as a movement regained, regarded both the same, all complete in the sight of seeds of life with you. That part, like most of it I don't even understand. When it said ocean made, but it was talking about emotions being revealed as the ocean made. I don't know, like that part, maybe I'm like looking at it in a totally weird way, but like if obviously a maid would be somebody is that that's how you would spell yeah that's the maid that cleans and then it talked about ocean well, what wait what yeah but that's short for maiden it could just be a young woman Emotion i took that as like a mythical oh. almost uh what do you call those things man my short term like memory a, is crazy mermaid yeah like a type, mermaid yeah. or a siren yeah type woman of the sea oh yeah but uh, emotion revealed as the ocean maid Oh, look at that. I should recite poetry. You got a good voice for it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's the first time I've ever heard that. So I'll have to look into it. Hmm? <laughs> Go ahead. It, reciting it would be better than if you were reading it. I agree. Okay. Coins and crosses never know their fruitless worth. That's a crazy line. Cords are broken, locked inside the Mother Earth. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Coins and crosses never know their fruitless worth. So money, money is uh, dumb, and so is religion. Apparently, money and religion are both dumb. Wow. Cords are broken, locked inside the mother earth. 
they won't hide. They won't tell you. Watching the world, watching all of the world, watch us go by. I think what he's saying is, and what's interesting is when I'm looking at the lyrics here, it's got one guy is called the preacher. Oh, really? It says part three. So part oh, two yeah, says eclipse, the and then the part teacher. three it says a preacher, the teacher. Sad preacher nailed upon the colored door of time. Insane teacher, be there, remind me of the rhyme. There'll be no mutant enemy. We shall certify political ends as sad remains will die. Reach out as four tastes begin to enter you. I mean, these lines are just pretty in crazy. They're just crazy. Reach out as four tastes begin to count, to, to enter, enter you. you. But that that's a fascinating concept. If If... The song is a love song, then I think the point of the song is to say none of this shit matters except for the connection you have with that other person. And he gets down to when he talks about coins and crosses are, are, are what did he say? They were worthless or fruitless? They, they don't know they're fruitless or something like that. Hold on. Yeah, never know their fruitless worth. Yeah. That's really fascinating because... Here's a question. Oh, wonder, go ahead, go ahead. I was wondering if it's like literally coins and crosses or if coins and crosses are what the majority of us deem to be the most important. And so he maybe he's saying what people think is the most important a lot of times doesn't doesn't Yeah, but why why use that? Obviously you're trying to make a statement particularly about religion. Yeah. yeah. Which Okay, so what was your take? Well, I mean, look, whatever people value is, is is what they value. So the question is, are things valuable in and of themselves or are they valuable because human beings decide to assign value to it? That. So if that world if that world is true, then that sentence makes a lot of sense. The problem with that is, if that is true, then you cannot limit worthlessness only to coins and crosses what if i say people are, are equally worthless if, I, if, if, if we say that things are only valuable insofar as human estimation oh yeah assigns a value proposition to them um that's okay so you could say coins are worthless and you could say crosses are worthless but what if i say people are worthless what if my value system is inverted from that and uh, all I care about is coins and everything else is, is uh, worthless, which means I can exchange human lives for coins because coins are what's most valuable to me. Yeah. So, a problem. like on the one hand, there's a lot of things that people have to assume to make certain concepts work. Right? Like, so you have to assume a sort of steady state morality for the idea that human beings are the ones that assign value to things to work. Because what I just said is obviously a nightmare and most people, especially in our village, be like, well, no, I'm not talking about that. Right. So I'm saying like, you're assuming a certain kind of universal value structure mm -hmm. for things. Um, but I don't, I, I think that, that that sounds cool to say. It sounds very edgy. But if you've seen the worst of humanity up close and in 3D, um, I don't know, man. That cross has been pretty... I've, I've gotten a lot of utility mm. out of that cross, man. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, on the one hand, you know this as a Christian. You're interfacing with this being. Yeah. Especially us, he's he's haunted us our entire lives. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, he's the so, word haunted, but well, okay. me personally, I have been because, you know, I'm I'm taking the term haunting to mean some spirit is is following you when you don't want them there, and I had experiences like that with God where I had a very failed attempt at atheism in my high school years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But so there's like a part of me that's like I know that people. If people haven't, I don't know what what it's like to not experience God. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right. yeah. Particularly God in Jesus Christ. So, I know that 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 lived reality of experience for me is not the lived reality of everybody mm -hmm. else. And for a long time, I thought it was. And so it wasn't until I don't know, 10, 15 yeah. years ago, where I began to go. You know what? This is. 
Yeah. Well, I kind of thought it was like, you know when you there's like a lot of sounds and you don't even realize and then somebody says, hey, do you hear that air conditioner running? Then all of a sudden you hear it. Right. I, I thought it was like that. I thought everybody can have these experiences and to this degree, they just had to pay attention to it. Yeah. Um, but that's not true. Right. I, I think. I think. So for them, if their experience for whatever reason is 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 that God is not kind of there yeah. then i understand how you could think it's it's worthless especially if you especially when you look at the proximity to coin because mm-hmm. he's saying coins and crosses um which you could say oh he's going for alliteration because c's are everywhere in that in that little stanza mm-hmm. coins and crosses and then he says chords are broken so there's another c there uh, i think another thing is that if you're the type of person that experience religion through somebody else instead of experiencing it yourself Mm -hmm. then there's a lot of fruitless useless things that you could probably see from it Mm -hmm. because you're just looking at somebody else's experience and commenting on that right but i think that once you have an experience yourself then it's different you know what i'm saying like yeah no yeah i i agree with that um and then uh he uh because like if you just looked at a regular christian like they're not going to be perfect they're going to do bad things they're not going to be perfect people but they're still going to claim that jesus is their savior so like somebody looking in on that could be like oh okay you're just as nasty as us but you got a savior to help you boo you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. but but like if you experience it you realize oh no i'm not a perfect person but i absolutely need jesus as my savior yeah you see what i'm saying no i I, no i agree with that uh, Daniel says Christianity isn't worthless by any means just because it doesn't do anything for me doesn't mean it doesn't do good for others well obviously it does do good for you because you <laughs> you live in a country that says all people are created equal and that came out of a, a Christian worldview that's that's indisputable now I'm not saying that everybody was Christians I'm saying it came from a Christian worldview the concept of the equality of everybody that we all share and enjoy is not a normal right idea in the human experience and right. i mean we, to this day in the modern age we have a stratified understanding of human beings like some human beings are valuable some aren't some human beings are just there to be a labor force for other human beings who are some human beings are there just as inconvenience kill and get rid of them some human beings are dangerous we need to put them all mass incarcerate them. so like the, yeah. the idea that uh, all people are equal is not a natural human not idea at all. all. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I do think it's done a couple things for you, yeah. Daniel. Um, but at the same time, when you look at the proximity of coin and crosses and the marriage of money and the worship of money, you don't have to be a theologian to realize that that there is a sense in which Christianity has been bastardized. And by the time you got to the 70s, the late 60s, early 70s, I don't know when this was written, but you had a lot of people that were disillusioned with Christianity. And what was fascinating was they didn't all go to atheism, you know, like people mm-hmm. did 10 years ago when they're all trying to be cool mm-hmm. and doing the flying spaghetti monster stuff. I remember when you first brought up the flying spaghetti monster to me. I was like, yeah. The what? <laughs> the flying spaghetti monster. Yeah, now. yeah. Was just, I'll, I'll tell you oh later. It was this gosh. funny AP. <laughs> That's when I knew their movement was, I said, these guys aren't going to last another five years. Holy shit. Is, was, is that the one I was where right. they said the Bible doesn't talk about? Okay, we'll, we'll talk about no, it later. No, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Basically, the guy's like, I could just make this up. It's the flying spaghetti monster or whatever. Um,. But what was fascinating is in the late 60s, early 70s, people were not going to atheism. They were leaving Christianity for Eastern religions. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Right? They were they were going into their Hinduism, Buddhism, psychedelics. That was, That's the thing that's... Fa- and, and what's fascinating now is that with the... Re-emer- with really the emergence of Joe Rogan, psychedelics have come back to the forefront. And you know, me, I do all this research. Like, looking back, I'm like, yo... Like LSD, you know, all these, they were talking about this shit back in this, I was like, oh, that's what LSD, I had no so idea. Weird. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I was looking at it, for, we were looking at it from like the technical standpoint from the originator and all that, and then he was talking about these psychedelic experiences, and then like, it was like halfway into the thing where it was like, oh, this is LSD, and I was like, holy shit, because... You know, we're still kids. We're still products of the war on drugs. So we're like, holy shit, LSD. That's right. terrible. And don't right. do it. Don't, you know, like we 
don't do it. Don't don't take any of that stuff. I'm just saying, um, the 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 movement didn't go from Christianity to atheism. It went from Christianity to Eastern religions, and that says something. Really, it, I I do believe that that also impacted the music. Like, oh yeah, for sure. Not only just you know different scales because scales function regionally it's mm-hmm. really interesting so like you're getting new scales and progressions that obviously opened up your mind to different kinds of music but these people were exploring a lot of things man and that to me says there's still a a desire for for transcendence something that goes beyond this stuff like even with the music like right the music itself I'm talking about this band in particular is designed to get you yeah, that's someplace. True. Yeah. So like we're always like reaching for something for something yeah. higher. That's why I said like these guys are never like these these new atheists or whatever, like they're yeah, they're that that's, interesting. They're, that's that movement. And you know what's fascinating? Right as that movement was dying out, they started having these atheist church things. So they'd go, they'd meet with each other, they'd sing. They'd fellowship all types of shit just without God. It was really, really fascinating. What would they sing about? Oh, it was like regular songs, like pop songs, U2, whatever. Huh. And, oh, yeah. And there, there was a lot of things where people were trying to, trying, to, trying to satisfy or satiate the desire for transcendence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and so that as an idea, as an ideological concept is never going to dominate the thinking of a majority of people and i i think you know the 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 communists the soviets proved that where they had this thing called forced secularization Mm -hmm. because they were like oh as soon as we explain to these people that god is a myth they'll you know whatever so all we have to do is get rid of the parents and then you just brainwash Mm -hmm. the kids it will be good you couldn't it was impossible yeah which people have that 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 drive toward the the transcendent so even in a oppressive horrifically horrible society like like what you saw in communist in the soviet union um people still had to go there because yeah. it's like it's it's like breathing or it's like yeah we're, you're a bird you know what i'm saying you can tell people flying is a myth all you want but people are gonna fly that's their nature so i, I just think people are constantly gonna are gonna reach up the problem is is that mm-hmm. you have very bad actors who know that about human nature and so they convert that that natural desire to hit the transcend they they convert that into capital and so when you talk about coins and crosses and you talk about the proximity between that and then the ultimate understanding of like what love is and yeah and what's ultimately value is this what's ultimately valuable how can you value somebody who you can't see more than somebody that you can see right in front of you and if I were to say, I know that I could see Sori, but right now Jesus is realer to me right here than Sori is, I know that's complete nonsense to people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not mad at them for that because I'm looking at the same screen everybody else is and there's nobody over here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, what's fascinating to me is that people think they're looking at me. They're not looking at me. That's not me. Mm-hmm. That is a projection of me. That's not me. Mm-hmm. And none of these colors are here. So to me, I don't care if you can't see Jesus like right next to me. Because mm-hmm. I'm looking with a different set of binoculars, right, right. as it were. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. What did you think of this song? Oh, I, I, I loved it. This one is actually getting the highest score of all the Yes songs so far. This is a 9.7 for me. Mm-hmm. What about you? That that's such a fascinating thing that Sadie's saying. I've literally never met somebody who went from Eastern philosophy to atheism. Almost every atheist I know started out Christian, then stopped believing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I've never seen like a Hindu atheist. Like I was a Hindu and now I'm an yeah. atheist. You know what I'm saying? And I guess some of that is like you're gonna be born into a cultural milieu that's that's obviously dominated by Christianity, so Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to be an yeah. ex-Christian in that sense, uh, so that that makes sense. Um, so yeah, interesting. All right, what did you give it? I give it a nine point seven. This is a nine dot. You know what? I think I'm going to give it a nine dot seven two. I liked the song before, but this song lyrically was stronger to me. Not because it was much better than the other one, just because it was more legible and understanding to me. So. This one is a little bit higher than the, the previous one. 
Where is that witch, Sadie? There is Amy Lee. You're about uh, two hours and nine minutes late, damn it. Oh, no. Okay, guys, we got one more song coming for you. DJ Nick gives it a 10. We got one more song coming for you. Stay tuned, and you're going to want your popcorn for this one, dear listener.